morning and greetings to you all in the name of Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Today is sixth Sunday after Easter and the theme is the ascended Lord opposed those who are united to him by faith. Psalm 118 verses 15 onwards Shouts of joy and victory resound in the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. Lord's right hand has lifted up. The right, uh, Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die but live, and will proclaim what the Lord has done. The Lord has sustained me severely, but he has not given me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord through which the righteous may enter. I will give thanks for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this and it is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to the Father, glory to the Son, and glory to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, and now shall be forevermore. Amen. Now we'll have the opening hymn. <laughs> Thank you. 
We will follow the morning and evening worship order. Please turn to page 5, section 2. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall declare your praise. Early in the morning we make our prayer to you, Lord. Surely you will hear our voice. Glory to the Father, our Creator. Glory to the Son, our Redeemer. Glory to the Spirit who sanctifies us, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, to the end of the ages. Amen. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Section 3. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. O God, most holy and merciful, we confess that we have sinned against you and one another in thought and word and deed and in what we have not done. Therefore, we pray you to have mercy on us and forgive us our sins. Amen. The Almighty and merciful God grant us pardon and remission of all our sins, grace to amend our life and the strength of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ have mercy on us. Lord have mercy on us. Shall we say the Lord's Prayer together? Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Now we will have the scripture reading and then followed by him before the gospel reading. The first reading has been taken from Acts chapter 7 verses 54 to 60. Acts chapter 7 verses 54 to 60 When they heard this, they were furious and gnashed their teeth at him. But Stephen, full of the Holy Spirit, looked up to heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. Look, he said, I see heaven open and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. At this, they covered their ears and yelled, and yelling at the top of their voices, they all rushed at him dragged him out of the city and began to stone him. Meanwhile, the witnesses laid their clothes at the feet of a young man named Saul. Saul. While they were stoning him, Stephen prayed, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Then he fell on his knees and cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. While he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the word of God. The second reading has been taken from 1 John chapter 2 verses 28 to 1 John chapter 3 verse 3. 1 John chapter 2 verses 28 to 3, 3. And now, dear children, continue in him, so that when he appears, we may be confident and unashamed before him at his coming. If we know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who does what is right has been born of him. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall like him. We shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, just as he is pure. This is the word of God. 
The Holy Gospel has been taken from the Gospel according to St. John chapter 17 beginning from the 6th verse. Glory to you Christ Jesus. Gospel according to St. John chapter 17 beginning from the 6th verse. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours you gave them to me and they have obeyed your word now they know that everything you have given me comes from you for i gave them the words you gave me and they accepted them they knew with certainty that i came from you and they believed that you sent me I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, 
for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, that I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. Today's theme, the ascended Lord uphold those who are united to him by faith. Before we go into the meditation, shall we look unto the Lord in prayer. Precious Heavenly Father, thank you Lord for this wonderful day and opportunity which you have given us. Thank you for guarding us from all dangers and perils of the night and giving us this beautiful new day. Thank you, Lord, for we could gather in your name, even through this technology, through this online. Thank you, Lord, for your omnipresent God. And thank you, Lord, for giving us this joy of worshipping with your saints. Lord, as we look into your words, your living words, God, speak to each and one of us. Open our hearts and minds, Lord, and teach us whatever you want to teach us. Let your name be glorified and let your will be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Gospel according to St. John, chapter 17. This is the longest prayer of Lord Jesus Christ ever recorded. And if you look into the context, Lord Jesus Christ, now he, he has almost come to the end of this, his hour, his ministry on this earth. And he knew very well that very soon he will be crucified. And this is the time of crisis and is praying with much burden. And uh, this is a prayer of commissioning that is that he is entrusting his disciples to the Father and also entrusting the work to his disciples which they have to do after him. And this is also a prayer Lord Jesus Christ did as the high priest to the Father. And this prayer demonstrates his deep love and concern for his people, his disciples. And this whole chapter is the prayer of Lord Jesus Christ. And here he is praying for himself. And then he prays for his disciples 
and then he prays for all the believers which were to come in the future also and today this morning we'll look into the prayer which he prayed for his disciples gospel according to saint john chapter 17 from verses 6 to 19 and uh, i have divided this passage this prayer verses 16 to 19 6 to 19 into three sections jesus prays for his mission towards his disciples which was entrusted to him by his father and the jesus prays for the protection of his disciples and jesus prays for the sanctification of his disciples so number one disciple uh, jesus prays for the mission towards his disciples which was entrusted to him by his father and that is verses 6 to 8 it says i have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world they were yours you gave them to me they have obeyed your word now they know that everything you have given me comes from you for i gave them the words you gave me and they have accepted them they knew with certainty that i came from you and they believed that you sent me jesus christ is praying for the mission the purposes for which he was sent into this world and especially with regard to his disciples there are three things which he is praying for number one is that i have revealed you to them jesus christ revealed the father to his disciples that was his mission to reveal the father to the disciples therefore in john chapter 14 from verses 16 to 11 you will find that jesus christ is saying to his disciples that i am the way the truth and the life and no one comes to the father except through me he tells his disciples several times that if you have seen me you have seen the father if you know me you know the father and john chapter 10 verse 30 lord jesus christ says that i and the father are one so his mission was to reveal the father his character who god is who father is exactly to his disciples colossians chapter 1 verse 15 says paul writes that the son that is lord jesus christ is a exact image of the father god the father in heaven so he prays for his disciples and is also praying he is also repeating and telling god the work which you had given me i have accomplished it and i have revealed you to them number one number two mission that they have obeyed your words to teach and train the disciples according to the word of god to teach and train the disciples and equip them with the word of god therefore lord jesus christ says that they were yours you gave them to me and they have obeyed your word lord jesus christ taught and trained according to the word of god second timothy chapter 3 verse 16 paul writes that all scripture is god breathed and useful for teaching rebuking correcting and training in the righteousness of god therefore it was very important for 
Lord Jesus Christ to teach them and train them and discipline them according to the word of God. Number one, number one mission was to reveal the Father. Number two, to teach them, train them according to the word of God. And number three, verse 8 says, For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. Third mission was to entrust the word of God to his disciples. For I gave them the words you gave me. Who gave? The Father gave the words to Lord Jesus Christ and Lord Jesus Christ, it was his responsibility to give them, give the word of God to his disciples, to entrust the word of God to his disciples. And what did they do? They accepted the word of God. They understood the importance of the ministry of the word of God. And therefore, in Acts chapter 6, you will find when church was growing, the first church and the apostles and disciples, they were very clear about the ministry of the word of God. In Acts chapter 6, verses 1 onwards, I will read. It says, In those days when the number of disciples was increasing, the Grecian Jews among them complained against the Hebraic Jews because their widows were being overlooked in the daily distribution of food. So the twelve gathered all the disciples together and said, It would not be right for us to neglect the ministry of the word of God in order to wait on tables. Brothers, choose seven men from among you who are known to be full of the spirit and wisdom. We will turn the responsibility over to them and will give our attention to prayer and the ministry of the word. The church was growing, the ministry was growing, the mission was growing, but they, they were very clear about their priority. In spite of the mission, in spite of the ministry, in spite of the church growing, they were very clear about their priority. They said that we will give our attention to the word of prayer and to the ministry of the word of God. Why? Because they knew it, the importance. They knew it that Lord Jesus Christ has entrusted them, has given them the responsibility of handling the ministry of the word of God. In the time of crisis, Lord Jesus Christ entrusted them because it was very important for Lord Jesus Christ to give the word of God to the disciples and it was also important for the disciples to keep the word to accept and to keep and the word of God and to and to give and to commit themselves and to, uh, to give the full attention to the word of prayer and to the ministry of the word of God. We could be very busy in the church doing a lot of social things, a lot of activities. But all these things cannot take the place of the word of prayer and the ministry of the word of God. We can do the mission work but still miss the word of God. We can be involved in so many organizations, Christian organizations, but still we can miss the ministry of the word of God. Number one, Jesus prays for his mission towards his disciples and trusted to him by his father. Number two, Jesus prays for the protection of his disciples. Verses 9 to 13. John chapter 17, verses 9 to 13. Here he prays. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours and all you have is mine and glory has come to me through them, to the disciples the glory has come. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world and I am coming to you. 
Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave them, the, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. Number one, he is praying for the protection of his disciples from the world because they will be in the world with the word of God. And he knew it that there will be conflict between the world and the word of God. There will be conflict between the attractions of the world and the ministry of the word of God. He knew it that there will be conflict between the entangles and worries of the world and the word of God. He knew it that there will be conflict between the, the glittering, the, the worries, the, the, the responsibilities of the world and the ministry of the word of God. And he prays, please protect them by the power of your name, by the power of your name and authority, protect them from the world because there will be conflict between the patterns of the world and the pattern of the ministry of the word of God. And number two, here he prays for the unity of the disciples. In the name you gave me so that they may be one as we are one. Now here is, you know, the comparison is there. How the, the unity should be done. How, the, how they will be one. How the disciples will be one. The comparison is as we are one. As father and son are one. In the same way, they will be united in one spirit. In one body. That they may be, they may remain as one, and they'll be united with the Father and the Son. And therefore, John chapter fourteen, in John chapter fourteen, uh, Lord Jesus Christ tells that, verse twenty-three: If anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My Father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. We will dwell in him. He will be our dwelling place who, the one who loves me and who obeys my teaching, my father will love him and we will make him as our dwelling place. And verse 20 says, On that day you realize that I am in the father. When the Holy Spirit will come into them, he says that on that day you will realize that I am in, in my father and you are in me and I am in you. Whoever has my commands and obeys them, he is the one who loves me. He's praying for the protection from the world. He's praying for the unity of the disciples. And today morning, I was reading Psalm 133. Here, you know, I came across this word. How good and pleasant it is when brothers live together in unity. How good it is and how pleasant it is when the disciples live together in unity. It is like precious oil poured on head, running down on the beard, running down on Aaron's beard, down upon the collar of his robes. It is as if the dew of Hermon were, were falling on Mount Zion, for there the Lord bestows his blessings, even life evermore, because there is unity amongst the brother. Jesus Christ prays for the unity of the disciples. Number three, he prays for that his joy may be complete in them. Therefore, protect them in the name, in your name, Holy Father, in your the authority of your name. Grant them the joy, protect them that they may have the full joy. He says that, I am coming to you now, verse 13, 
John 17 verse 13. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. Full measure of joy. And how we will have that? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And John chapter 15. Lord Jesus Christ giving this example of wine and the branches. He is saying verse 7. That if you abide in me and my words abide in you. Ask whatever you wish and it will be given to you. This is to my father's glory that you bear much fruit showing yourself to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love, abide in my love, if you obey my commands, and you will remain in my love, just as I have obeyed my Father's commands and remain in his love. I have told you this, so that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be complete. It will be complete. The joy will be completed when we will abide in him and his words abide in us. It is not only one time. It is every day we are living with him. We are sitting with him. We are talking with him. That's called abiding with him. We abide with our family every day. We, we abide with our children every day. We abide with our family uh, and our relatives, uh, we abide with them uh, day and night. And here the word of God is saying that if you abide in me, and my words abide in you, the word of God is totally controlling us, abiding in us, then the joy will be complete. And therefore, he is praying that Father, protect them. Protect them. So that my joy will be complete in them. So that they may have the full measure of my joy within them through the word of God. Number three, Jesus prays for the sanctification of his disciples. Verses 14 to 19. Here it says, verse 14. I have given them your word. The world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. Now, this verse is very important. 17th verse is sanctify them separate them make them holy by the truth and what is this truth your word is truth the word of god is truth and through that word of god sanctify them make them holy set them apart and as you sent me into the world i have sent them into the world for them i sanctify myself that they too may be truly sanctified he's praying for the sanctification of his disciples to make them holy to keep them holy because they are, they are called to be holy and to set apart themselves to set apart the disciples how through the word of god the only way to be sanctified the only way to be holy is to abide in the word of God. Three things are there which I am sharing with you. He is praying for the mission. Again, the basis is the word of God. He is praying for the protection and the basis is the word of God. He is praying for the sanctification. Again, the basis is the word of God. And if you look into the passage, word, 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 they are being repeated. And therefore, the word, that means the word of God, the logos, is key, one of the key words in the passage. 
other keywords are himself lord jesus i i i i and father 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 these are the keywords and here the another keyword is word 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 uh, they have obeyed your word i gave them the words they have accepted them they have accepted the word and i have given them the word sanctify with them by the truth your word so if jesus christ is repeating if the word of god in the scripture is repeating word 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 and that means the word of god so it is very very important it was very very important for lord jesus christ to pray in this manner with regard to the word of god and therefore it is very important for us to understand the ministry of the word of god and being protected by abiding in the word of god and being sanctified through the word of god lord jesus christ himself said in matthew 4:4 that man shall not live by bread alone man shall not live by job alone man shall not live by the salary alone man shall not live by business alone but he will live by every word which passes from the mouth of god every word that is rema every word which passes from the word of god and this each and every chapter each and every verse according to second timothy 3:16 a god breathed in hindi it says isme swas phunka hua hai parmeshwar ka swas isme hai the breath of god which brings life when god made adam <coughs> it was just the body but when he breathed his life into him he stood up and he was a living being in the same way this word of god this word of god is a living word of god it is like double edged sword and it is useful for teaching rebuking correcting and training in the righteousness of god and therefore word of god says lord jesus said that man shall not live by bread alone but by every passage every verse which is there in the scripture man shall live by the word every word which passes from the word of uh, from the mouth of god how many books are there in 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 the scripture how many books god has kept in the scripture there are 66 books and how many books god wants us to study and how many books we know from this word of god and if you look into the old testament today we are going through a time of pandemic we're going to time of plague and pestilence and if you look into the word of god in the old testament the reason god brought the plague pestilence famine was that his people had rejected him his people forsook forsaken the laws they had they had rejected the word of god they did not abide with the word of god and nowadays i'm 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 going through i'm studying book of jeremiah and i tell you to my horror when i'm marking <coughs> the warnings and the commands and the disasters with with a red colored pencil my most of the chapters in jeremiah they are in red and i tell you the context which was there that time and if you compare with the present context not much difference is there my dear beloved not much difference is there jeremiah i'll just read few verses from jeremiah jeremiah chapter 6 he says that to whom can i speak and give warning who will listen to me but i am full of wrath 
of the Lord and I cannot hold it. When I stretch out my hand against those who live in the land, declares the Lord, from the least to the greatest, all are greedy for gain, prophets and priests alike. They are greedy for gain, all practice deceit. They dress the wound of the wound of my people as though I, it were not serious. Peace, peace, they are saying when there is no peace. They are saying peace, peace, that's false. Because there is no peace, God himself is saying. Are they ashamed of their loathsome conduct? No, they have no shame at all. They do not even know how to blush. So they will fail among the fallen. They will fall among the fallen. They will be brought down when I punish them, says the Lord. Why? Verse 19 says, Because they have not listened to my words and have rejected my law. And so many, so many, so many verses are there in Jeremiah, if you read and underline with red marks, the almost entire book will be read. It says, therefore, therefore, because you have rejected me, therefore, because you have forsaken me, therefore. Chapter 17, it says, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 21 says, this is what the Lord says. Be careful not to carry a load on the Sabbath day or bring it through the gates of Jerusalem. Do not bring a load out of your houses or do any work on the Sabbath, but keep the Sabbath day holy as I commanded your forefathers. Yet they did not listen to or pay attention. They were stiff-necked and would not listen or respond to discipline. Because they had not observed the Sabbath, they had misused the Sabbath. My dear friends, my dear beloved, Paul writes in chapter Romans chapter 15, verse 4, that all these things in the Old Testament have been written for us. Have been written for us for our teaching for our warning and if you read the old testament god brings famine pestilence plague pandemic calamities because his people they rejected him and the whole land mourns. And if you read Hosea, you should read Old Testament. It's very important to understand Old Testament. And if you compare with the present context, I, I don't see much difference. Hosea chapter 4. Here he says, Hear the word of the Lord, you Israelites. Because the Lord has a charge to bring against you. He has got a case. Lord Jesus, uh, uh, God the Father is saying that I have got a charge against my people. Against you who live in the land. There is no faithfulness, no love, no acknowledgement of God in the land. There is only cur cursing, lying and murder, stealing and adultery. They break all bounds and bloodshed follows bloodshed. Because of this, the land mourns. The whole land mourns and all who live in it waste away. They languish. The beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea are dying. And verse 6 says, My people are destroyed from the lack of knowledge of the word of God. Because you have rejected knowledge. I also reject you as my priest because you have ignored the law of your God. Because people in those days rejected the word of God, therefore they were punished with famine, with plague, with pestilence. 
it is a warning for us are we really serious with the word of god how much time do we spend with the word of god we study so many things we are equipped with so much of knowledge of so many things in this world what about the knowledge of the word of god we may study so many books written by many authors about word of god we may read many books and authors books by other authors about lord jesus christ it doesn't make any difference lord jesus christ the lord is looking into his word of god if you abide in me and my words these words abide in you ask and shall be given to you second chronicles chapter 7 verse 14 it says if my people who those who call themselves christians if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then i will hear from heaven and i'll forgive their sin and heal their land which land the land where we are living god will heal when we'll repent when we'll turn to him and he is there to forgive us he is a god who is merciful god he will forgive us he is saying that he will forgive and heal he will forgive and heal healing follows forgiveness conclusion jesus in his time of crisis prayed and entrusted his disciples the word of god and the disciples they were very clear the importance of the word of prayer and the ministry of the word of god and shall we also make our priorities readjust our daily life according to the word of prayer and the word of god this has been trusted to us and it is time that we repent and turn to god and pray to him for his mercy and forgiveness that he may forgive us and heal our land shall we pray precious heavenly father thank you lord for speaking to us through your living word thank you lord jesus for the wonderful prayer of intercession the high priestly prayer which you made for all of us and you have commissioned us with your word and trusted us with your word and you prayed for protection from the world you prayed that we may remain in unity and we may be filled with your joy and you have given us this word and you and you have sent us in this world with the word of god help us a lot to abide in you and to abide in your word so that we will be filled with your joy and your name be glorified in jesus name we pray amen shall we say the apostles creed together i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth i believe in jesus christ his only son our lord he was conceived by the power of the holy spirit and born of the virgin mary he suffered under pontius pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended to the dead on the third day he rose again he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father he will come again to judge the living and the dead i believe in the holy spirit the holy catholic church the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and the life everlasting amen now we'll have the offertory hymn i exalt thee
23 praise the lord o my soul all my inmost being praise his holy name praise the lord o my soul and forget not all his benefits who forgives all our, all your sins and heals all your diseases who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles the lord works righteousness and justice for all the oppressed he made known his ways to moses his deeds to the people of israel the lord is compassionate and gracious slow to anger abounding in love he will not always accuse nor will he be harbor his anger forever He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities for as high as the heavens are above the earth so great his love for those who fear him as far as the east is from the west so far he has removed our transgressions from us as a father he has compassion on his children so the lord has compassion on those who fear him shall we pray for everyone who are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries this week gracious heavenly father in the name of your son jesus christ the god of holy spirit we come to into we come into thy holy presence o lord and we bow down at thy holy feet and worship the god worship the god and glorify the holy name worship the god and adore the holy name worship the god and magnify thy holy name and lord we praise you and we worship you and we give you thanks especially for our dear ones who are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries this week thank you lord for their lives for you already thought for them even before the foundation of this earth and you formed them in their mother's womb and lord and you have blessed them with all the blessings with all your grace and love lord Thank you Lord for all the blessings which you have bestowed upon them till this day. Thank you for grace and mercy. Lord, we commit them into your safe and mighty hands. Lord, especially in this tough time, we commit them and we pray whatever plans and purposes you have for their lives may be fulfilled for your name and glory. Lord, we also pray for all those who are not keeping well. Especially we pray for our parish priest reverend deepak anil jojo and his family we pray for uh, brother kanad das and family we pray for mrs champa hosain we pray for all others our dear members who are not keeping well in this time of pandemic father god you are our compassionate and gracious god who is slow to anger abounding in love and faithfulness and whose love endures forever You are a merciful God. You are a gracious God. God, according to your grace and mercy, Lord, stretch your hands of healing and touch them and heal them, because you are God, Jehovah Rapha, who heals. For you alone heal, O God. Lord, you have formed us. And remember your love. Remember your the sacrifice of your only Son, Jesus Christ. And Lord, heal them. according to your grace and mercy in jesus name we pray amen shall we have the offertory him now
Now we'll pray for the offerings and also we'll pray and give thanks for those who are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversaries this week. And we also thank God and, and remember and pray for Auntie Mrs. Champa Hussain who went to be with the Lord and we'll thank God for her life. Shall we pray? Psalm 103 says, Praise the Lord, O my soul, all my inmost being, praise His holy name. Praise the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all His benefits, who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases. Shall we pray? Precious Heavenly Father, Creator of heavens and earth, Lord, You are the Creator, You are the Sustainer, you are the provider, you are the redeemer, you are the sanctifier, you are all in all, you are the sovereign and supreme God. Father God, you provide us with everything, all good things. You are God, El Shaddai, and therefore you are God, Java Yire. You are all sufficient God and therefore from all your store, from all your sufficiency, you give us our daily bread. And Lord, we bring to you our offerings from what you have given us because everything belongs to you, Lord. We bring this offering to acknowledge you 
that you are our God, our creator and sustainer. And you have called us to be your children through the blood of your son Jesus Christ. We bring this offering to you, Lord, acknowledging that we depend and trust in you and you alone. Accept these offerings as living sacrifice we offer ourselves. And glorify your name. Lord, we also thank for all our dear ones who are celebrating their birthdays and wedding anniversary this week. And especially we remember Auntie Mrs. Champa Hussain. Thank you for her blessed life. Thank you, Lord, for the purposes which you fulfilled through her life. Thank you, Lord, for glorifying your name through her life. Thank you for all the blessings and grace and mercy which you bestowed upon her and upon her family. You had thought about her before the creation and the foundation of this world. And now, in the fullness of time, you have called us, called her to your dwelling place. Thank you, Lord, for this assurance that she is with you. And there will be a day when we will all meet together in your presence to praise your name. Thank you, Lord. We ask this prayer in the mighty name of the Lord and Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Now we'll have the intercession prayer. Shall we pray? Precious Heavenly Father, we pray for our church and each and every family members, each and every little ones and dear ones and elderly ones, we commit them into your safe and mighty hands. Lord, we pray for our city, we pray for our neighboring districts. We pray for our state Jharkhand. We pray for the chief minister, the governor, and all the leaders and authorities of this state. We pray for this country, this land where you have kept us. We pray for our president, our prime minister, and all the governors of all the states and all the chief ministers and all the leaders of all the states we commit them into your hands of father and especially when we are going through a time of pandemic lord only you can save us and therefore we pray according to your great compassion according to your uh, unceasing mercies unending mercies According to your faithfulness, O Lord, we come to you and ask you, Lord, show your mercy upon us and forgive all our sins. And we turn to you, Lord, and pray, be merciful on this land, heal this land, and save this land, O Lord, and remove and stop this pandemic. Relent, O God. Relent from your wrath, O Lord, and pray, stop this pandemic. Also pray, Lord, heal those who are affected by this pandemic, Lord, and who are, who are going through tough times. Lord, heal them, because you are God, Jehovah Rapha. Heal them, O God. And grant your peace to those who need your peace, especially our dear ones who have lost their dear ones. You are Jehovah Shalom who gives peace. Grant your mercies, grant your healing, grant your forgiveness, grant your peace to all of us, o Lord. Forgive us and heal this land. We commit all our 
presbyters, we pray for our bishop, we pray for the pastorate, we pray for the diocese, our synod, we commit all of them into your safe, mighty and protective hands. Lord, be with them, heal them, and Lord, touch them and grant them your peace and grant them your wisdom and understanding that they may lead us like the shepherds. For your name and glory, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Section 15, we will have the responsive prayer. You renew us, O Lord, in the power of your spirit. Stir us up that we may serve you with gladness. Help us, O Lord, to work for freedom and justice and grant fullness of life for everyone. Fill us with your love and for the poor and helpless. And to the sick and dying, give comfort and hope. Grant unity and concord in our country and to its people the blessing of peace. Guide with the Spirit all who bear authority and let your rule be over all the world. O oh Lord, bless your people and keep us steadfast in faith and love. Creator of the morning, you drove out the darkness and brought light to the world. Dispel from among us the darkness of sin. Establish your truth in our, in our hearts. Strengthen our hands for the, for the doing of good. And give us light and joy in your Son, Jesus Christ, the true light. Amen. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we were created, and by whose love we, we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves today in love in service to you and to one another, to Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. Amen. Now we'll have the traditional hymn. <laughs>
Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, Triune God, thank you Lord for giving us this wonderful opportunity and this joy of worshipping you with your saints. Thank you Lord for your presence, O oh God. Thank you for speaking to each one of us, O oh Lord. Lord, grant your presence, your protection, your provisions and your peace to each one of us, O oh Lord. We commit each and every family, each and every child into your safe and mighty hands. We commit all our elderly and dear ones into your safe, mighty hands, O oh God. Lead us and guide us because you are God, Jawarrah, our shepherd, oh Lord, and spread your wings of protection over us and grant us your protection for you are our hiding place and you keep us from distress and Lord, surround us with your songs of deliverance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you.